Recently in one of my weekly live streams, which I do every Monday night at 5 o'clock Pacific, I talked about an example problem that says we need to find the area between a curve and its tangent line at a specific point. This is an interesting kind of problem because it kind of mixes together some Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 topics. We have to not only find the equation of a tangent line at a specific point, but then we have to use that tangent line equation along with the original equation and find the area between those two curves. Both of these two topics are covered on my calculus study guides, both my calculus one and calculus two study guide, depending on which topic. If you wanna check those out, there is a link down in the description below. But I wanted to show you this problem from that weekly live stream that I'm doing, because I think it's a good example of a couple different topics all kind of mixed in together into one application. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the example and I'll show you how to do this kind of problem. Find the area of the region bounded by the parabola y equals x squared, the tangent line to this parabola at the point one one, and the x-axis. So this is weird because what we have to do is we have to find a tangent line equation and then we have to use that tangent line equation to find the area between two curves. So, or you know, you could think of it as like between a curve and a line. It doesn't really matter. A line still can be, you know, thought of as a curve. So we're trying to find the area between these two curves, but we don't even know what one of the curves is. We actually have to find that. So this is pretty interesting because it's going to combine <clears throat> combine some topics for from differential calculus and integral calculus and put them into one problem. So basically, we're going to be finding a tangent line equation and then the area based on that um, within the same problem. So first thing we need to do is figure out the tangent line equation. And like I said, tangent lines is one of the formulas on my calculus one study guide or calculus one cheat sheet. Link down in the description if you want to check that out. So I have made several videos on how to find the equation of a tangent line at a point. Um, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail how to do this, but I will definitely kind of show you those steps. So first thing you want to do to find the equation of a tangent line of a function at a point, you want to think about what is the what an equation of a line looks like, right? We're trying to find an equation of a tangent line should probably start with the equation of a line. Well, a line is always going to look like this. We're going to have y equals m times x minus x0 plus y0. So this is a tangent line with slope m, and it goes through the point x0, y0. So notice we have x minus x0, but it goes through the point with a, the positive x0 as the x-coordinate. Um, so basically, it's going to be minus of whatever x coordinate you want it to go through. And then out here, it's plus of whatever y coordinate you want it to go through. So we already know a point. We already know that this tangent line is going to be tangent at the point 1, 1. So we already know our x0 and our y0. They're both 1. So that's given. That's pretty straightforward. But we still need to find the slope. Well, how do you find the slope of a tangent line? To find the slope of a tangent line, whenever you see a problem that says find the slope of something, your brain should automatically go to derivative, right? Derivative just means slope. The derivative of a function tells you about that function's slope. You know, there could be problems where they're going to say, find the slope of something and you don't use the derivative. But generally, your brain should always think slope, derivative, slope, derivative, slope, derivative. Those two things go hand in hand like 99% of the time. So if we're going to find the slope of a tangent line, since a tangent line has to have the same slope as a function at the given point, we want to find the slope of our function at that point. Well, to find the slope of our function, y equals x squared, like I said, we need to find its derivative. So the derivative of x squared is just going to be the power rule. We'll bring the power down in front, bring the 2 down in front, keep our x as x, and minus 1 from our power. 2 minus 1 is 1. So x to the 1 is just x. So our derivative is 2x. But now keep in mind, what we need this tangent line to have the same, have the slope based on a specific point, we need it to be based on this point right here, 1, 1. So we only care, we only want to use our derivative to find the slope of our function at the point where x equals 1. So when x equals 1, that's the slope we want. So we want to plug in x equals 1 into our derivative to get the slope of our original function at x equals 1. So doing that, we're going to get 2 times 1, which is just 2. So we know that this function, y equals x squared, has a slope of 2 at the point 1, 1. So 
what we can do is take this slope of two and that's gonna be our M, right? So now our tangent line equation is just gonna be two times X minus one, because one is our X zero, plus one, which is also our Y zero. Of course, from here, we can definitely simplify this to make the rest of our problem a little bit easier. Distribute the two, giving us two X minus two plus one, uh, simplifying the negative two and the plus one gives us two X minus one. So this is going to be the equation of the tangent line to this function at the point one, one. So basically what we're trying to do now, now we've kind of, we've completed the first half of the problem. What we need to do at this point now is kind of imagine a separate problem where they just say, find the area between the curves, y equals x squared, y equals 2x minus 1, and the x-axis. Well, the x-axis is the same as saying y equals 0, right? The x-axis basically has the equation of y equals 0. So essentially what we're trying to do here is find the area of the region bounded by these three functions right here. So in order to do that, like I said, you know, in the, the prior examples we went through, first thing you want to do with any of these find the area between the curves problems is to graph it. That's always going to help make things a lot easier for you. So let's start with the graph. So first of all, y equals x squared. That's just going to be a parabola with the vertex at the origin. That's relatively straightforward. The line y equals 2x minus 1. Well, kind of a little shortcut of what that's going to look like. We know that it's going to be tangent to our function at the point 1, 1. So right here at 1, 1, we know that this line is going to be tangent to our function. So basically, we know right off the bat, it's going to look something like this. It's not the straightest line, but I think you get the idea. We could, you know, similarly just figure out, you know, negative one is the y-intercept of this line based on the fact that we have 2x minus one here and the slope is positive two. So basically that's going to give us a line like that. And then we also want to look at the x-axis or the line y equals zero. So you can see this little region right here that we're trying to find the area of what's basically, you know, trapped in between those three functions there. So this is an interesting one because we have a couple different options here. You know, generally when you're doing these, uh, find the area between two curves, you want to think about whether you want to integrate horizontally or vertically, whether you want to think about like a horizontal line slicing through this region or a vertical line. Well, let's think about each of those real quick. First, we'll start with the horizontal line. So notice as this horizontal line cuts through our area, cuts through this orange shaded region here, think about where the right edge of this orange area and the left edge of this orange area intersect with this horizontal red line. Well, you notice basically from the point where they intersect right here, all the way down to the bottom edge of this area, you can see all the way through that whole region, the right edge of this orange area is this line function that we have here and the left edge basically the point where this red line intersects with this orange region here uh, on the left edge is always this parabola so basically we have the same left edge and right edge function the right edge function is this linear function the whole way and the left edge function is this parabola the whole way and it's just going to go from the bottom of this area here up to the top okay so let's think about now what it looks like if we have a vertical line going through the whole way. So if we have a vertical line going through the whole way, things don't quite work out the same way because let's think about as we go from the left to the right. So right here at this, this kind of little corner spot right here, as we first start getting into this, the bottom edge of this orange region is the X axis and the top edge of this orange region that intersects with this line is the parabola. Okay. But then as soon as we get to right here, basically the right half of this, you can see that the bottom edge of our orange region is the linear function, the line, and the top edge is the parabola. So basically for everything right of where this line is here, we have the top being the parabola, the bottom being that line. Everything to the left of it, we have the top being the parabola and the bottom being a different line. So basically we have two different top and bottom functions which is not great. You don't really want that. So when we went horizontal, we had the same 
left and right function all the way through. That's definitely better. So we want to integrate this horizontally, which means we're going to integrate with respect to y, which means what we need to do is take our equations and solve them for x. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do is get these equations to be x equals something instead of y equals something, because that will allow us to integrate in, in the other direction, essentially, than, than how this is going to do. Because if you have y equals, you have to do the vertical split. If you have x equals, that's how you set it up for the horizontal line splitting it, which is what we want. Let's take these two equations and just solve them for x. So first of all, y equals x squared. We just have to take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give us x equals plus or minus square root of y. Basically, the, the positive square root is, uh, is going to be the positive portion of our, the positive x value portion of our parabola. And then the negative square root is going to be this negative x value parabola portion. So what we want is the positive portion because we can see that this whole region is all on the positive portion. So we don't actually need the negative square root here. So we're just going to take uh, x equals the positive square root of y. And we're going to use that half of our parabola. Okay. Then this function here, y equals 2x minus 1, we're going to, again, solve for x. So we're going to add 1 to the other side, y plus 1 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, x equals 1 half y plus 1 half. So now you want to think of this linear function as 1 half y plus 1 half. Think of this parabola as the square root of y instead of what we had up here. So now we're going to use the equation, which, like I said, is on the it's an equation on the integral calculus cheat sheet that I have, the calculus two study guide. There's a link down in the pinned comment below and in the description if you want to check that out. Um, but like I said before, the formula on there is basically to find the area between two curves or area bounded by, uh, you know, a region bounded by some curves. You're basically going to integrate the top function minus the bottom function. Well, this is a little bit weird because what we have here is, uh, the right function and the left function, because we're imagining a horizontal line going through where we have, you know, this line on the right edge and this parabola on the left edge. So we're actually going to think of this as the integral of the right function minus the left. And the equation on my study guide does definitely, you know, explain this a little bit more, but I'm explaining it through the video. So um, I'm just going to write left and right because I think that's a little bit easier to understand. Um, and I really want to show you how to use this formula too, so you can apply it yourself. So we're going to have the integral of the right function minus the left function. Well, like I said, this right function all the way through the whole region is this line, which we know has this equation right here, one half y plus one half. So we're going to have the integral of one half y plus one half minus the left function, which is the positive square root of y. So we're going to have minus the square root of y. Now, generally, when you do this right minus left, top minus bottom, you want to make sure to put parentheses around the left or the bottom function. In this case, it only has one single term. So minus, you know, putting parentheses there isn't going to make a difference in this case, because the negative sign doesn't have to distribute to multiple terms. So now this is the thing we're going to integrate. And since we got it all in terms of y, since we're integrating with a horizontal line moving vertically through our area, we're going to integrate with respect to y. Basically, you want to think of that as you integrate with respect to whatever variable your line is going to go throughout. So since we're, we have a horizontal line that we're moving vertically, it's going to go through a range of y values as it moves up and down. So we're integrating with respect to y because it's taking on a range of y values. Basically, this line would be like y equals some number. If you have a vertical line, that would be x equals some number. So you'd integrate with respect to x. In this case, we have y, so we're going to go dy. Now we need to think about what are the range of y values that this horizontal line is going to have or that it's going to take on. Well, it's going to start down here at this bottom edge, which we know is y equals zero. And it's going to go up to this point where they intersect. Well, fortunately, we already know that because we made our tangent line specifically to go through that point and to intersect with our parabola at that point. 
So we already know that that point is one, one. So basically the Y value there is one. So essentially the range of Y values that we're going through is from Y equals zero, the bottom edge to Y equals one, where these intersect the top edge of our region there. So this is going to be the function that we're going to integrate to find the area between these curves. So first thing I'm going to do before actually integrating that is to reformat this just a little bit. Instead of taking the square root of y, what you want to do is think of that as y to the one half power, because that's going to make it a lot easier to integrate this because we're going to be able to use power rule. So now to integrate this, we can just use power rule for basically all these, or I guess the first and the third term here. Power rule says that we're going to raise our power by one since we have some number times our variable y. Keep in mind, since we have a dy here, y is now our variable. So we're going to take y, raise the power by one. When you don't have a power, it basically means that the power is one. So we're going to raise it up to two. And then we divide by our new power. We already had one half out here. Dividing one half divided by two is going to be one fourth. The integral of a constant basically just adds your variable to it. So it's just not add, sorry, multiply it by your variable. So the integral of one half is just one half y. And then again, here, we're going to raise our power by one. So one half plus one is the same as one half plus two halves, which is three halves. So the power of this is going to be three halves. And then we divide by our new power. Dividing by something is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that thing. So instead of dividing by three halves, we're going to multiply by two thirds. Okay, now we're going to evaluate this from zero to one, which basically just means plug in one for all of our y's first. So that'll be one fourth, one squared, one half times one two thirds times one to the three halves. And then we're going to minus in parentheses, whatever we get from plugging in zero for all of our y's. So one fourth zero squared plus one half times zero minus two thirds times zero to the three halves. Okay. Make sure you put all this in parentheses here. You know, whatever you get from plugging in zero, because you need this minus sign to distribute to all those terms. Uh, I know I say that a lot, but it's a, a common mistake. And I just want to make sure you, you have that reminder so you don't miss that. So let's go ahead and simplify this. One raised up to any of these powers is just going to be one. So one fourth times one, one half times one, negative two thirds times one. That just gives us one fourth plus one half minus two thirds then zero raised up to any of these powers is just zero. Zero times any number is zero. So all of these in here are just zero. So we're just going to have minus zero, which just does nothing. So now we want to add up these fractions. We're going to need a, <clears throat> a common denominator. So 12 is probably our best bet. Four times three, um, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, three times four gives us 12, which is divisible by two. So 12 is the best common denominator here. So one fourth is the same as three twelfths. One half is the same as six twelfths. And minus two thirds is the same as minus eight twelfths. So we have three plus six is nine, minus eight is one. So uh, one twelfth. And that's gonna be the area between these, these curves uh, based on the tangent line that we had to find uh, at the very beginning. So just one twelfth is gonna be your final answer. Well, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button down below. That's a huge help to my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon while you're down there too so you're notified of all my new videos and when I go live each week. Like I said, these topics are covered on my calculus study guides. If you wanna check those out, there is a link to both of those down in the description below. And if you wanna keep learning about how to find the area between two curves or how to find a tangent line equation, just go ahead and click on one of those videos over there. Thanks and see you next time.